Hey folks, my name is Joe Sinclair and I'm the inventor of the Mantis and today I'll be walking you through uh, what makes the Mantis the world's easiest to use 3D printer. Now, a lot of that actually comes down to the combination of the uh, different hardware components, uh, some of the graphical user interface components, and then also some of the firmware components. So I may get a bit technical, but bear with me, um, it'll all come together. Um, and for those 3D printing nerds like myself, I think you'll be pretty pleased with the product that we're offering. So, um, first I want to talk about uh, the green cheap metal case. So this is actually modeled after my first 3D printer that I ever had uh, in my life, which was the uh, Solid Doodle 3D printer. I was always a big fan, unfortunately. Um, they went out of business and you know I always loved their printer, so I wanted to build one very similar. Um, it's a very sturdy design, strong enough to stand on. Um, actually, I should probably probably demonstrate. Mandy, bear with me. Okay. Alright. Alright. Alright, so, like I said, strong enough to stand on. That's probably dangerous. Insurance company's not going to like that. Um, Alright, so, um, super strong, sturdy design, super robust, um, not going to be a problem. Um, it's powder coated a uh, premium uh, Verde Mantis green color. Um, it's actually uh, colored after my favorite uh, sports car, which was a uh, Lamborghini uh, Huracan uh, Performante in uh, Verde Mantis. Um, that just kind of gives it the wow factor, and for me, it's something I'm super passionate about. Um, now, diving into some of the uh, technical parts of the Mantis, we're actually going to start a print. Um, so that while I'm talking, we'd be printing stuff. So I'm gonna have Mandy kind of zoom in here. Um, first, I'll just look at the user interface. So basically, it's super um, um, kind of refined into basically the bare bone component. So you have a select file button, and then you have basically a status uh, area where the uh, printer or the user interface will tell you um, what's going on with the printer, and then a print button. Now, this user face actually um, works completely dynamically across all devices. Um, we've tested it on probably upwards of 50 devices at this point, so we're expecting that not to be a problem. Um, so that way I'm actually going to print from Mandy's phone because she's using mine to videotape. Let me just unlock your phone. Thank you. Okay, great. Cool. <laughs> all right, so um, in full disclosure, Mandy... Uh, uh, downloaded off of Thingiverse a, what is it, a, a cat? Toothpaste tooth, A cat toothpaste squeezer. Um, so I'm basically, let's see if we can zoom in here. Can you, you got that? Yep. Is that good? Look right enough? Yep. All right, so I'm gonna select the file, um, uh, browse, and then which one? It's the cat toothpaste squeezer. Yep. All right, so I'm gonna click that, and then I'm gonna click the print button. So. Just to show you, it's as easy as pressing print. There we go. So um, it tells me um, that, hey, your file uh, uploaded successfully, um, and now it's preparing the file. Um, so, and then it starts telling me the heat up sequence and things of that nature. Now, so basically what happened in those few seconds and why the Mantis is so easy and super convenient is basically the, um, the file is uploaded and on board the firmware that's on the Mantis uh, took that file and completely prepared it for the 3D printing process. So it repaired it, it oriented it properly, um, it then uh, used, it, used the optimal slicer settings um, to cut the file into machine code or G code and then it uh, takes that uh, G code um, and then it uh, begins heating up the 3D printer autonomously to the uh, appropriate temperatures. Um, we're using PLA, um, that's what comes standard with the Mantis. Um, it's then going to uh, basically heat up the nozzle, um, auto level the bed with a nine point grid. Um, it actually uses, um, uh, after it's level, it uses three axes simultaneously to keep itself level all the time while it's printing. Um, it's gonna purge the nozzle and then it will start printing your part. And you know, just that easy. And that basically uh, all is going to happen in a matter of uh, two minutes. So the majority of that time is actually the printer heating up the heated bed um, and the nozzle and purging itself and doing uh, the nine point um, bed leveling check um, for the auto leveling portion. Now I wanna talk about how we were able to actually accomplish that. So um, when 
we first started thinking about how we were actually going to build the Mantis, it all came down to how do we perfectly combine um, a user interface, hardware, um, and the firmware on board the 3D printer, um, along with um, the onboard electronics, so that everything is able just to work without any hiccups or headaches. So um, it's actually going to start the nine point auto bed leveling sequence now. So basically how we were able to accomplish that is a couple of things. So the first thing in terms of uh, the motherboard, um, we chose actually uh, a motherboard that would allow us to feed it uh, machine code at the fastest possible rate we could. Um, and so we actually chose the uh, SAV MK1 board. Um, I actually was able to get in touch with the actual creator of the board, um, who I believe was originally in Spain and moved to the US at this point. And um, he was able to walk me through actually how he built it. So we built it from scratch on our own then um, and you know, started testing it and using it. And we found that, hey, it was one, it was great from a, um, a data transfer rate. Um, it was also fairly affordable to produce. Uh, it also had um, significant privacy uh, increases over other boards because you actually have to have physical possession of the board to update the firmware. You can't do it um, um, over the internet or anything like that. Um, and then also, um, like many other boards, this board was able to um, allow us to use standard um, uh, open source firmware um, that has excellent uh, fire prevention and thermal runaway protection so that you know that would never be an issue um, for folks using our printer. So um, we went with the uh, SAV MK1 motherboard um, which also has like an additional expansion bay um, and uh, Bluetooth capabilities. Um, so that was from just the actual like operation of um, the you know motors onboard and things like that. But then I thought about hey, what about all the headaches people face with uh, connecting USB, installing drivers, um, you know all the troubleshooting you have to walk through from an IT perspective. And I said okay, well let's use something where any device can connect to the Mantis via Wi-Fi. So uh, what we ended up actually. Uh, going with is saying, you know, hey, let's actually put a uh, Raspberry Pi on board um, the 3D printer, um, the Mantis, and we'll use this actual uh, miniature computer um, to actually, Amanda, you can zoom in here, so um, while I was talking, um, it actually started printing perfectly, and that was actually an STL file that I uploaded originally. Um, all right, back to the Raspberry Pi. So the Raspberry Pi, I said, all right, Let's just have it so it's easy, so any device can connect to it um, and use it. Um, you know, which other uh, systems offer, but we want to do it in a more seamless way. So, what we actually used was um, uh, Octoprint as the underlying kind of engine of the Mantis. So, for um, all the users um, that want to tweak all the different settings and really get under the hood, you still have the capability of doing that with the Mantis. Um, you actually um, could just hop over to the Octoprint window and do everything you're used to, use whatever slicer you're used to, control it, um, just like you would any other 3D printer. But again, um, if you're kind of lazy like me and you just want it to work seamlessly without any headaches, um, I just use um, our interface that just allows me just to upload the STL file and just simply press print and then everything else is completely automated by the printer. Um, now. Uh, Hopping back over to the printer, so uh, we got the Raspberry Pi, the motherboard we talked about. We went with a uh, Bowden uh, extruder system. Um, we're using a standard like E3D extruder, um, so we the printer completely uses all standard hardware. So nothing on here is like proprietary. So you can find these parts anywhere. A lot of the components that actually make up the gantry system are 3D printed. But we went with a, a Bowden system, so we actually have the spool on the back here. So Mandy will actually have you come around. So we have the spool on the back here. The spool is actually on a um, detachable um, kind of like spool holder. So that way it's convenient to kind of uh, pour it around. You can always, whenever I carry it around, I just kind of put it over there and you know just take it and go on my way. Um, so that's just kind of the spool holder portion of things. Along with that, the spool holder, and I'll actually show this, Manny. 
Um, we put uh, bearings on the spool holder just so that um, you basically have little to no friction. Um, I know that's a problem on some other printers and other spool holders, but that was a big thing for me is I wanted it to be pretty compact, but just it, it had to work um, very easily. Um, in terms of the gantry, we use uh, a Core XY. Um, the reason I went with the Core XY and the bone combination, as many of you might know, is that uh, we can just up the print speeds and we just make it faster um, and just overall kind of um, overcome some of the slowness that a lot of direct drive systems have. Um, and again, it allows us to mount a cooling fan right on the front so that we can get crazy overhangs and not have to utilize support um, very often. Uh, along with that, it is single extruder. Um, and I know a lot of folks um, may say, hey, I want, uh, you know, dual extrusion. You know, that's something that down the road we're interested in. But right now, just to create the easiest one to use in the world, um, we went with the single extruder just because it, it made the most sense. Um, we do have, for the auto bed leveling, it's a touchless probe um, that just picks up the, the bed as it's moving up and down. Um, we can actually, maybe Mandy, you may not actually be able to see it because the bed's kind of level, but so a lot of printers only the two axes move simultaneously, but on the Mantis, the actual uh, third Z axis is actually moving along with the uh, X and Y axes up top. And the reason being is because that's basically ensuring that wherever the uh, extruder is extruding plastic material, uh, much like a hot glue gun, it's always perfectly level with the bed. So the bed is actually moving up and down as the nozzle is moving to different positions, so that's always perfectly level. Uh, now, in terms of uh, power supply um, and things like that, we actually went with a, a standard laptop power supply. Um, the reason I personally was interested in that was in the past, I had 3D printers with onboard custom power supplies, and I had them go bad previously, and it just turned into a sourcing nightmare um, for sourcing extra parts and just getting my printer back up and printing. I and mean, also, there was always like power consistency problems too with the custom ones. So we went with a standard um, uh, 150 watt uh, uh, laptop power supply, so no issue there. It just works. You can get them off the shelf from many different stores and vendors. Um, so that's just the uh, uh, background behind the power supply. Uh, of course, we have our uh, safety warning label on the bottom here. So Mandy, if you can zoom in on the safety aspect of things. So um, a big thing for us is safety. Um, you can get an optional enclosure with the 3D printer that includes a, a plexiglass on all the sides and uh, a front door. Um, if you have little kids in the house or whatever it might be. Um, and in terms of the uh, way the Z-axis is, there's some 3D printers where um, the Z-axis um, is actually the extruder and the extruder moves away from the part as it's printing it. We actually chose to actually have the bed move away from the part as the extruder is making the part. Reason being is because the gravity fed beds are generally more consistent uh, than a lot of the other systems where you know if a rod is slightly out of line on either side, your printer is going to screw up and your layers are going to be shifted and you're just going to have problems. Um, just allowing the bed be um, gravity assisted um, on the way down just makes it more reliable um, in its entirety. Um, I'm going to pop over to some of my notes here momentarily. Um, let's see. Talk about the Wi-Fi. Um, again, the, um, for those folks that want to get under the hood, um, you can use any standard like um, Slicer, Cura, or like Simplify 3D um, to generate G-code, um, you know, if you want to actually get into the thick of it. Um, oh, we're super open source friendly, obviously. Um, we're not, we don't have any custom, you know, hardware stuff that's going to hold you back. Uh, if you break something on this, um, you can, you know, you can source the parts from us or you can source them from anywhere that might be more affordable. Um, along with that, the bed size, uh, currently it's 8x8x6. Eight by, eight by um, we're expanding that to be 8x8x8. Eight by eight by eight. Um, that'll most likely be in uh, future iterations. 
But the reason why we went with that size is I've, I've had other uh, larger printers myself, such as the Ender 3. Um, but the, the thing that I always found is that for a lot of my projects that I do at home, it was somewhat overkill. And so for um, the average consumer or, you know, folks who just, you know, want to just run their 3D printer and not have any problems, not face any headaches, and they don't expect to run days and day long 3D prints, um, this was just kind of the right size that fell into that market um, for us. Um, let's see. So, you know, honestly, at the end of the day, for me, guys, this is just kind of a, you know, this is what I thought 3D printing should always be. It should always be this easy. Why isn't it like an appliance like a microwave? Why is it that I have to spend hours and hours learning how to, one, figure out what an STL file is and that it's triangulated mesh from, you know, an algorithm originally generated in the 1980s. Then I gotta figure out, okay, I have to connect drivers to my laptop, or I need like a laptop or something like that to connect to the 3D printer that stays with the 3D printer, um, and all the IT headaches that can come along with that. You know, some of the problems I ran into, you know, in my career um, have dealt with things like, you know, spending hours trying to figure out the optimal orientation of a part. Or it's like I could just have an algorithm like the Mantis does. It just does it in seconds, right? Um, same with repairing triangulated mesh stuff. Like, why should a human ever have to do that? Why not just have an algorithm that just does that very easily? Um, and again, in seconds. Um, why should I have to heat up my printer to preset settings that I already know are going to be? Like, it should heat itself up. It should auto-level. It should purge itself and it should just start printing so I can do other things so I can innovate so I can go back to SolidWorks or Fusion 360 or AutoCAD or MathCAD and I can start you know or Tinkercad even and I can actually start designing something you know that's innovative rather than spending my time tinkering with slicer settings just to figure out how to print my model why not just have all that automated and that was really kind of the that was really the driver behind the Mantis is I want to spend my time as a maker, as an inventor, as an innovator, designing cool products that solve real life problems for people and, and just build it with ease and then go right back to designing things. I don't want to spend hours and hours focused on the design portion. It should just work. It should just go. It should just be an appliance. Um, and you know, right now the 3D printing industry, it seems like folks aren't acting like that. So. You know, I figured why not just create a product that just makes it easy enough for anyone to use. And Mandy, who's actually standing behind the camera, um, thank you, Mandy, for video taping this, um, and all you do, of course. Um, when she first came on, she has uh, two decades worth of experience in um, STEM education. When she came on, she had no prior 3D printing experience. And I remember the first day she came in, um, I gave her a five minute tutorial on the Mantis, and within five minutes, she 3D printed her first part that she selected off of Thingiverse. You know, that was something that you just couldn't do before the Mantis. Like, it was never easy enough where you could just spend a few minutes with somebody and they can just get it and be 3D printing. Um, so that's a long-winded way of saying that this is the Mantis 3D printer. It's the world's easiest to use 3D printer. Um, it was built and forged from almost a decade's worth now of 3D printing experience, which is crazy to think about. And, you know, it's, uh, it's just easy. You know, just, just go watch Netflix or something, and, or design some things, and then get back to it. But, anyway, thanks for tuning in, thanks for paying attention, and uh, hopefully you'll support us and you know, buy your own mantis. Thanks. Bye.